Did a man go to hell and back to deliver a message? What are we supposed to believe of these types of stories of people going to heaven or hell and coming back to earth? Do we need new revelation from God? Today I'm going to be responding to a TikTok of a guy that says he went to hell and back. This gets wild. Stay tuned till later in the video where I respond to another video along these lines. Hey what's up guys it's Isaac David and this is the Daily Disciple where I help you find Jesus and follow him daily. If you're new to the channel subscribe because I'm putting out new videos every single day. A huge thank you to everyone on Patreon who supports what I'm doing and my ministry. Um, it is an amazing blessing to have you guys. You help the ministry keep going and growing so thank you. If you want to help support what I'm doing here um, head to the link in my bio patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple. Now onto the video. Why do I always say bio instead of description? Anyway you know what I mean. Without further ado let us watch. I don't know how many people this is going to reach, but this is going to be the most terrifying thing you've ever heard. God took me to hell and he sent me back with this message. Okay, so I hate to do this, but this video does have copyright music in it. Curse you, TikTok. So I'm going to explain what he says throughout the rest of the video as it's playing. So basically, this guy says that a couple months ago, he was dreaming and all of a sudden his spirit came out of his body and he was brought into hell. Now, he did verify that, yes, it is indeed a place of torment. I'm really glad we had somebody on the other side that could let us know that otherwise how would have we known it's like yeah it's not like we have a book or anything that tells us about that he says that when he went to hell god gave him a message that he spoke audibly to this man and he said with a booming voice repent for the kingdom of god is at hand repent and trust in me and he wants you to share this video of course uh so uh, more people can know about hell obviously okay so what are we supposed to make of people that say oh i went to hell or i went to heaven and and maybe you know I wrote a book about it because of course, you know, you went to heaven. It's like, why wouldn't you, you know, <laughs> what are we supposed to make of these people and their stories? Let's look to scripture as we're digging into this here. So in Proverbs 34, it says, who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has wrapped up the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is this, his son's name? Surely, you know. Okay. So what's the answer to this question? Well, we go to John 3 13 and it says, no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven the son of man we know the son of man is jesus so the answer to the question is jesus jesus is the only one all these other people that are saying i went to heaven for a quick trip so god could give me some divine revelation it ain't true what about hell though the reality is is there's nothing in scripture that even hints at this idea that god takes people on quick road trips to hell to teach them something he's not the ghost of christmas past god doesn't wake you up one day and tells you get in get in i got to take you some places in your past or or let's go to heaven real quick or hell real quick so I can you know uh, share some lessons with you because you're the chosen one and I need to share this divine revelation with you so you can communicate it to the world and on TikTok like this is my moment <laughs> it's like no 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 dude you ain't that special it's funny because God has already provided everything we need to know about hell and salvation like he's already got it there plainly in front of us so maybe this fellow is hallucinating I, I sure hope so, because fabricating these kind of miraculous experiences, even if your goal is to draw more people to Christ, it's still wrong. The funny thing is, is that we think we're doing God a favor by creating these stories or, oh man, this, this amazing thing happened to me in my life, or look how God connected it. And, and you know, you just kind of make something up because you want God to look good. It's like, guys, God doesn't need our help. His story is already so amazing. It's sad because people who say they have experiences of going to heaven or hell, uh, it's, it's like they almost paint themselves as modern day prophets. I heard this great saying once, I can't exactly pinpoint who came up with it, so just know that I did not. Um, if it's new, it ain't true. If it's new, it's not true. So if it's new revelation, this is obviously somebody just making this up. And if it already aligns with scripture, well, great. So here's my little caveat and distinction here. I do believe that God can communicate to people through dreams. And I think we've seen evidence of this, or at least the stories of this in the Middle East, where people that have no access to the Bible or God's word, it's like a closed country, and yet they have an understanding of who Jesus is in the gospel. And I, I believe that a lot of those people have experienced God communicating to them through dreams. I, I do think that happens. Um, I'm not one to verify which ones are fake and which ones are real. Like that's not my, <laughs> that's not my specialty. I can't do that. Um, at the same time though, we need to be discerning. So if those things that they're, they're learning through these dreams and these visions, um, if they align with scripture, 
then okay, that's fantastic, right? Um, especially in these kind of closed countries, it's kind of miraculous, right? Um, how did that happen? I, I don't have an answer for that other than God, right? Um, but if somebody claims, oh, I had this dream or, or vision or God told me this, and it doesn't align with scripture. The thing is, is there, there's nothing new that God's going to communicate to us. He's already provided everything we need. Be on guard when you hear people claiming direct revelation from God or new revelation from God. We should be weighing everything against the scriptures. This next video here kind of caught my attention because it kind of goes along the same lines of what we've already been talking about. Hello, everybody. This is Jesus. I am the Christ. The second coming, the one and only return of, here at my office today in Lahaina, Maui, Hawaii. Don't use all those lame excuses the Jews used and, uh, and most Christians will use to not believe in me that I don't line up with the Bible and uh, I'm crazy, I'm on drugs. All that stuff was used on me before. Don't make the same mistake. I am back. I am him. No reason to lie. I'm sober, serious, sane. I am Jesus Christ, the one in the Bible, the one that needs to be in your heart, bringing heaven today for those who believe and judgment, eternal damnation for those who don't. The only hate speech this can be is the one coming from you who doubt. Yes, indeedy. I am back. <laughs> Would Jesus say yes, indeedy? Is that like, is that, is that something Jesus, he's, Jesus comes back. He's like, yes, indeedy, I'm back. And also, also, um, I don't think Jesus, Jesus in the Bible, he never used the language of ask me into your heart. That's something we created. So it's like God, God looked down on us. He was like, oh, that's good terminology. I should adopt that. Like I, I should put that in the Bible, you know? So it's like, he comes back down. It's like, ask me into your heart, everyone. It's like, fine, whatever you want to use that language. That's cool. It's like, he didn't use it in the Bible. So now he's like accommodating to our new language about him. Ask me, ask me into your heart, everyone. <laughs> it's just so funny. Some random guy. Um, it's funny because he lays out the accusations against him. He's like, I don't line up with the Bible. People say I'm doing drugs. People say I'm lying. You laid it out there for us, buddy. Thank you. At the same time, I don't want to just laugh at it. Well, I kind of do just want to laugh at this guy. This is pretty obvious, like deception here, but there are other things that will pose as uh, messiahs that are not the messiah. They are false messiahs. The question that we should be asking ourselves is what are we putting our faith in? Here are just some examples from me on things that I falsely put my faith in. Um, sometimes I put my faith in my phone and social media to bring me peace or ease my anxiety or stress. Sometimes I put my faith in myself to make my life work. Some people put their faith in their spouse or their future spouse to bring them love and fulfillment and intimacy and connection, something that they can't provide fully. We sometimes put our faith in our friends to bring us the belonging that only Christ can really provide. You see, this guy on the street isn't the only false messiah. There are so many in our lives that we falsely put our faith in that cannot satisfy us, that cannot deliver what we want of them. You see, the crazy thing is, is that we keep looking for new revelation and a new savior and a new messiah, something to save us, some new information that can deliver us what we truly want. But what we truly need is right in front of us, is what God has already provided for us in himself, in his revealed word. It's there right in front of us and it just takes us waking up to see it. I know it could be easy to treat the Bible as just a dusty old book that really has no relevance to our day-to-day -day life, but that's really just because we haven't opened it anytime soon. We really haven't. Like if you began to actually explore the wonders of what God has provided in his revelation, it's it's amazing, right? And how it connects. God's story is so thorough and so beautiful and so intricate. You can spend your life studying it and you'll never begin to tap into the, the, the minute intricacies that are hidden within its pages. God is so amazing. We don't need more. We don't need new. We need to focus on what he has already graciously given us. I hope you enjoyed today's video and got something from it. If you did, I encourage you to give it a like down below and subscribe. Um, once again, if you want to help support what I'm doing, hit the link in my bio. I will see you guys next time. God bless.